grand. Oh, it is a deer. It's a deer. It's a deer. Oh, it's probably that fine stalky beer with the beer. <laughs> I need a beer yeah, right there. Just a second, guys. Just come under me. You'll be quiet also. for a second. Yeah, yeah look, just a little baby deer. You see it? We will be quiet. Have you noticed anything? Quiet. It's super quiet tonight and that's mm. usually a good indicator. There's no animal noises. We've usually got animal noises and stuff. Tonight it's very still and quiet. As clear as day that was. I don't know where to begin with this. And you'll have to forgive me. It's going to be a little bit of a ramble at the beginning of this video. How's the sound? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I feel like context is really important for a video like this because you're not going to get much visually from this. And so I think it's really helpful to know kind of what's going on and where we went. Um, so I'm hoping I don't get loads of comments about the, the video quality because I took my Canon SLR onto Canon Chase at night and I didn't have any kind of, um, I didn't have any kind of night sight. What do you call those things? Night vision. But somebody did and uh, at one point, oh well, in fact, at three points on this walk, we, we saw eye shine and we saw a deer. And one of the people um, did have night vision and they've uploaded the video to Facebook and this is what it looked like. So it was possible to get quite good footage on the night. I didn't get that, but I picked up two things two sounds and in the clip that you just heard in the clips that you just heard there's a very faint bark or howl in the distance um, when somebody did the howl so you'll hear a howl and then you hear somebody whispering and then you can hear a very faint bark or howl in the distance and then there's a clip where what you hear sounds like wind now it was a very windy day and I took I put this mic on top of the camera because I was worried about getting loads of wind noise. I do have um, like a dead cat thing that goes over it and I actually forgot about that. I should have taken that with me. I didn't take it with me. But um, generally I was really impressed with the sound that I was getting on the night. Um, very, very clear sound. Um, very little interference from phones. Um, everybody had their phones on flight mode and that seemed to be enough because um, when I took this to Snowdonia, the soundtrack was, was unusable, um, but I used it this time and it was great. And now I'm wishing I'd taken it to Japan because you can really hear what people are saying. Um, so I don't think I'm going to mention any names at this stage because we've we've all just met. And uh, on Saturday night, we went up onto Canuck Chase and we did what you could, we, we did a paranormal investigation. Canuck Chase is very famous for paranormal activity. And at some point I made a video about UK Bigfoot sightings using Deborah Hatswell's data. And I remember when I made that video, I was saying, I've got to go to Canuck Chase. And so finally, many, many, well, over a year later, I finally ticked that off because what happened, I made that video and I said I was going to go to Canuck Chase and then I had a nasty accident and my car was written off and I had to wait to get a new one. And uh, then once I got a new one, I was kind of focused on tutoring and all that kind of stuff. So 
finally did it and really did it in style because honestly I was thinking of going to Canic Chase during the day and a few weeks ago somebody who'd seen one of my videos approached me and said we're doing a basically they, they've been doing a longitudinal study and one of the guys has been going for decades you know regularly onto Canic Chase and the idea is that you record and document all the kind of strange phenomena over a long long period of time and look for those things that are repeatable so um, I was invited a few weeks ago said yeah that sounds really interesting and then obviously the day comes and you think are we really going to go on to Canuck Chase at night and I'd been saying to Marie and for a couple of days Marie was saying to me who exactly are you going up Canuck Chase with at night and I was like some people have contacted me and she said how do you know them like from the internet she's like I'm I'm coming with you so um, Marie thanks to Marie she wasn't feeling very well but she came anyway and we had a really great night it was really really good fun lovely people very interesting and um, as you'll hear if you listen to the whole thing and if you watch the whole thing I was I was thinking maybe you'll get something out of it if you watch it on the big screen in a dark room but obviously I'm not promising that you'll see much but you will hear and the other thing that I just want to mention, I learned an awful lot about about events that have happened on the chase. And um, sort of within that, I'm, I'm including UFOs. And one of the guy has an actual triangular UFO story from 1998. They also talk about um, some tunnels. And so I've kind of kept that in there where, you know, one of the guys in particular was telling his story so I've just left that in so it's more of an audio podcast type thing maybe uh, if you're not too bothered about seeing the kind of the torch, torches flashing around maybe maybe this is one to, to listen to and just hear some of the stories yeah there was talk of so I kept I kept this on my phone because so yeah I'll, I'll read this out because I heard about this um, but before before I read it out I want to tell you about um, the triangular UFO sort of very very quick summary of the story is that he was on the chase with a couple of other people I think this silent you know triangle the size of a football pitch which had lights on it it came over um, came over very very slowly um, kind of walking pace three of them saw it or two or three of them saw it and then a few months later a policeman reported that he had been in the area separately on that night and he'd seen the same thing <laughs> yes i know um so it's really great to meet people and 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 certainly the guy who was telling that story i'd really like to do an interview with him at some point um it's being dubbed the Midlands own Roswell. The controversial American flying saucer reports were brought to public attention thanks to a whistleblower in the intelligence arm of the US Air Force. And it was US Navy third class petty officer S.M. Brannigan who raised alarm bells about a mysterious crash in Pen Penkridge, a town on the edge of the River Penk near Cannock Chase, Staffordshire, between February and March 1964. He said three bodies were recovered from the operation to deal with the incident at Coxbarrow Lane, which involved Air Force intelligence and NATO. Never heard of that before. I suppose I ought to talk very briefly about where we went. So, um, just see if I can find it on a map. We started in Milford. We all met up at the Barley Mow. We drove to the Punch Bowl car park. And then none of the paths are actually marked here so if I had to guess I would say that we walked maybe this way I'm not sure maybe oh, did we cross a stream we crossed a stream on the stepping stones at some point so my, my feeling was that we walked up from the punch bowl car park at some point we turned left and then that led us down to some stepping stones over a stream. Um, obviously, your senses can be fooled very easily um, when you've no idea where you are in the dark.
um, but I was told that the path that we were going up you could see that there was a very steep bank to the right and there's another route that leads you up a different way up to the top of that and um, um, so so I would say we we walked with the steep bank to our right we saw a deer twice as we were going along there and then there, at some point there was a fork where we could have turned right and gone up the bank but instead we turned left and then eventually that led us down to the stepping stones and about halfway down there we stopped at a tree and there was a really strange noise and unfortunately when you listen to it back you're probably going to think that's just wind but I was there it wasn't wind and it was like a low rumbling nearby and one of the thoughts from one of the guys who was there who's been studying phenomena around there for decades is that some of these phenomena could be seismic and in fact he's put on Facebook an incredible map where you can see I think they're medieval um, bell pits mines so y you even wonder whether you were listening to something collapsing underground so yeah we were on Canuck Chase in the middle of the night who'd have thought it um, if you find this interesting if you want to catch up with another installment please um please like subscribe ding the bell comment below thanks a lot bye big block of flats in the middle of nowhere is that what that in a was a quarter of a mile at the roundabout take the first exit onto main road a513 oh sorry thank you everyone lights on full beam there Kidding me? We've just parked up at the Barley Mow, which is in, I can't remember the name of the village, can you? Milford. <laughs> We're at the Barley Mow in Milford. Um, it's taken us, I don't know, has it taken us about an hour to get here? Mistakes were made. <laughs> and there's a wimpy next door. And I'm quite tempted, but Marie doesn't fancy it. Oh, it's so we ain't we got the drug deals going yeah, on tonight, like the Woody Black on. We can't catch it. There was a drug deal going on on the. Oh, I oh, think. Uh, yeah. There's yeah, yeah, something going down there. <laughs> I'm on there. <laughs> Probably fucking this guy over there. Yes, we were standing there. You were all of a sudden. Yeah. 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 Well, there's, there's people always topping themselves there. It's a bit like some park actually. There's a lot of people in there. Uh, sort of letting do their Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. It's often the other one that walks kind of Oh, yeah. When I was a kid, about six people drowned. Really? Yeah. On purpose or? That, that just, um, just, you know. or? was it like six in one go, or just over? Is that over a gangster sort of two to four years? Really? I mean, myself and brother we used to swing out to, to the bowling pass pool. Yeah. Um, it's still there now, the old uh, scout. Yeah. We used to swing out to that, but. You don't think about the dangers of suddenly, you know, uh, over, overcoming with cold and stuff like that. Yeah. Which one's Powell's Pool? Powell's Pool's one by the um, Baldmere Gates. Uh, Baldmere. Oh, <laughs> the oh, one with the boats on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Oh. Where are you going, guys? <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 <la
Do you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, oh, yeah. there. Oh, that's oh, it. No. Oh, it's only a little one. It's only a baby. Yeah, yeah. a little baby. Yeah. Little baby yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Oh, I saw that. I just went off. I've been damaged, mutilated, and they're not the same. I'm not, yeah. I'm not the same. I'm not the same. What, Jim? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. As long as I'm in the middle. Me too. Me too. Yeah, that's it. Really? I'm still, I'm still uh, to tell the tale. Such a bizarre it's 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 well. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Not just a German cemetery, but German cemetery itself is actually yeah. well yeah. Um, Yes. And um, Steve, there is a story yeah. about yeah. a husband who used to be an the caretaker's um, yeah. house, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, which is actually in German. Um, and as he, as he got down there, he saw like, the, what he thought was a big dog. And, um, you know, being out in the middle of nowhere with a big dog, which could literally just be running free, and they got the whole bit worried. When the dog stood straight up and stared at him with its red eyes, they kind of you know, realised it wasn't. Okay. Tree there, sticking yeah. up. This tree sticking up there. Yeah. It's slightly wider than that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was stretched from. Well, from where we are, you see that tree in the distance? Yeah. To there. <laughs> it was enormous. And you saw that? Would would you say it was a night like tonight, similar to tonight? It was not. It was a. Big, it was a. It was a full of moon. It was a globulous moon. It was frosty, you know, when you have it, you, you, and it's a still frosty night. Yeah. And it's really cold and still. Yeah. That, it was a bit lighter than there. A bit darker, I would say, in, in a sense. Yeah, because, you know, funnily enough, looking at the, the, the sky tonight, it's quite light. if something black came over, you, you'd, you'd see know it. about it, wouldn't yeah, you? You'd see it. You know, the, 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 the sky's kind of bright silver. Yeah. You see, the thing is, Way. It's Stafford. We've got Stafford that way. We have Cannock just over here. Yeah. We have Hensford. Yeah. And we've got Litchfield. So there's quite, you know, there's quite a bit of uh, ambient light that comes up. Right. Yeah. I know, I, to this 
to die. To this day, I do not know what, what that was. That's incredible. Classic black flying triangle. If I'd have been by myself, I'd have been the sanity. I've got two friends with me. Yeah. Well, we had broadcast quality videos. Yeah, we but... Yeah. It's probably 200, 150 feet in the air. Well, you, your first thought isn't, oh, I better video this. It's, you know, what the fuck is that? Because you, you're actually thinking, am I in danger? Well, that's or? what we were thinking. Yeah, I'm kind of playing. It's still pictures in my mind. I look up and Yeah. It's absolutely smooth. Yeah. And it went. I mean, this thing, it, it was probably doing walking pace as well. Yeah. Right over, you know, and you sort of go like oh, this. Probably got to where we were just at the end of the track. Yeah. And stopped. It didn't decelerate. It stopped. When it stopped, we could hear this about a 50 per ton. Yeah. Then it went, whoo! <laughs> now it's like no, no, it just went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and luckily, that's on flight now. That's gone off. The, the copper had Yeah. Copper had seen it. Uh, and what year was that again? That was 1998. 98. Yeah, there was a new foul flap on around here at the time. It was the time just before and just after. Just before there were. We up the um, Trent Valley, which is this way, going up to Burton. Yeah. Up to, um, all the way up to Doncaster, they were what they were called silent Vulcans. Oh. And they said they, were, they looked like Vulcans and they were silent Vulcans. Yes. Yes, I know, I know Vulcans. And they are not silent. Now they, this is what people have seen. And they were calling them silent Vulcans at the time. Yeah. That's just going again. My phone is on, but it shouldn't be. I'll switch mine to airplane mode, which is a good idea, people. Yeah, We have a flashing light in front of us in the air, probably an aircraft. I've got three, it's just going up again to three. First number. Because above us, what's above us here is the UA 37, which is upper amber air route 37, which is the main route. So you've probably heard about the drones in Colorado yeah. flying these patterns. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think it is? I'm thinking somebody may be doing a... Uh, could be military because there's a lot of military stuff now that's... Uh, yeah. They're doing these sort of drone swarms, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I, I noticed they asked them not to shoot them down, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. asked them not to shoot them down. Yeah. yeah. Can't fly drones over the chase. Oh right. Yeah, can't fly drones over the chase. The van. Really? Yeah, the van can't fly drones on the chase. We went top and you get... So if you see anything, unless it's somebody... And they're difficult to fly at night. Right. A difficult flight I'm noise. Stable. Yeah. I'm staying with Brave Steve. Do you know what? Is, did, did, is there a, like a specific <laughs> reason why they're bad? I think it's because we've got a lot of air traffic coming in and out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. See what we get. Yeah, we might, you know, we might be able to not triangulate. It is a day, it's obviously the minute. Oh, it's probably that same stalky beer with the beer. <laughs> I need a beer like that. <laughs> Can you all be quiet for a second? Yeah, it's his little baby dad. Can you see him? Can you Have you noticed anything? It's quiet. It's okay. super quiet tonight and that's mm. usually a good indicator. There's no animal noises. We've usually got animal noises and stuff. Tonight it's very still and quiet. Mm. But Not I'm sensing that something's following us, something's... <laughs> but now, I just said to Gail, I said, Gail, do you realise it's, it's, it's... Of all the times we've come down here, it's super quiet tonight. But it changed. It changed about halfway down that pathway yeah. when we started the collecting. Yeah. 
Okay, carry on. Uh -huh. Can't wait. Uh -huh. Now we can't go. Did you see the deer? I saw it really clearly. Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh. You'd be surprised how many deer is on here. Yeah, that is absolutely. When we when we saw the dark shape, Bigfoot, whatever it was, up on on the top, we were walking back up that valley as we've been down here in the summer. Just about, you know, you've just got that like afterglow in the, in the northwestern sky. Yeah. We're going up there, we got near the top, these bloody deer came charging over the top, and we're like, whoa, and they went between, we're like, shit, what's happening? Now we got to the top, now this is the, the thing, and at the time, I'd, you know, I'd never researched any Bigfoot, we got to the top, and just as we got to the top, it was like, Jesus, what's that smell? <gasps> really? Yeah, what is that smell? And I put, it smelled like it was a mixture of sewage, vomit, yeah. and the shittiest baby's nappy you've ever, f right? Yeah. It was god awful. Really? And I, yeah, I've done um, forensic photography and I know what dead bodies smell like and it smelled worse than that. It was terrible. And as we walked to the right of us, off a short path going, because of this dark shape, and I, as I say, I said it stood up or more like extended up. I don't mean it was seven or eight feet tall. So we've got our mag lights out, went like that, illuminated, and off it went. Oh my god. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do a call. Okay. You have to excuse me. We got one. Well, I think it's aircraft. Don't do yeah. this in a public place. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about this. side of here, about two mile away from here. <coughs> and we're walking along and there's Gal and I mean was it Ori as well? Um, and their two friends. Yeah. We're walking along. We could see these lights. What the bloody hell are these lights? So we went up the bank and we stood in the uh, in the forest. Then we realised it was a family on bikes and they're going along. <coughs> so Gal goes, oh. <laughs> you have never seen four people on bikes pedal away so fast in your life. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that something's following us, walking along with us. The we up the bit for a bit, just listen there. So you heard something in the distance respond yeah, to the howl? Yeah, we heard something in the distance, like a, 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 a real distant howl towards your direction. Yeah. And then behind us, it, up this way somewhere, we heard like a whistle. But like either a squirrel moving around, like a call from a squirrel. Yeah. Or a whistle. But somebody else heard it as well from down there. <laughs> it wasn't them making the noises. They heard exactly what we heard, the howl. Oh, sorry. So it wasn't them? <laughs> The first one was it wasn't we heard, then. and then the next one they shouted that, and then they got the reply, which is what we heard. <laughs> right, okay. And then the, the they didn't hear that from you. Right. And then there was a second a second howl from us. Oh, yeah. we didn't hear that. We only heard the first one. Which is probably a couple right. of minutes later, there you go, so it wasn't straight. Two straight howls, Kim, that weren't them. Not even one. And then the whistle weren't them. Right, okay. It's muddy again, isn't it? 
<laughs> you've got you've got to stop saying that word. <laughs> Dictaphone. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. See, see if you can. Uh, right. We will people. be quiet then. Yep. Okay. What direction did you hear the noise? <laughs> anyway, you can pan it. Some freaky noises going up there. I don't like that. Do you want to have a go? Have a listen, have a listen. Fucking <laughs> <Okay, no. laughs> Shitting myself here. Too much knowledge. Do I just press the. Pop that round your neck, yeah, just press the button on the. They do. Oh, they still, still do. Still pinging the towers. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not far that now. But if it's very interesting, yeah. but I think I think it's been haunted by people. P people have haunted, people have haunted the place. They've gone in doing the Ouija boards and all that yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And I think they've actually called something. And it's in the tunnels. What are the but tunnels called? Draclow tunnels. Draclow tunnels. But saying Drake that, but saying that, you know me. I'm very. See, I don't worry, I walk around here by myself. Right, yeah. First time we went down there, this is before it was popular, and they were just. This is when they were knocking all the. The guy who bought it was ripping out all the, you know, the precious metals and everything. And we had a night visit, and we went round. I was walking, it's the only time I've had a sense of presence. And I was walking, and I stopped, and I'm like, we're being followed. And I mentioned it to Andrew Elmer and I said, we're being followed and Kelly, I said, what do you mean? I said, there's something following us. So we stopped back, the group go on. And we had this feeling, we went all the way around, we got to the end and they're having a talk, you know, in the main walk of dining hall, so having a talk in there. And the guide says, all the, the contractors who are working out down here don't like it. They get very spooked. And we said, why? And they said, because there's something following them all the time. Oh, he just looked at each other saying, right, okay. Yeah. Remember when we met the guys in Beauty Tuppers the museum? Yes, yeah, right, he said he'd, he'd, and he had like a that utility, and he said he'd been bothered, didn't he? Yeah, he had been, they'd been bothered by something, yeah. yeah. Well, we had stuff thrown at us in the in the old GPL room, didn't we? That's right, yeah. yeah. It's, it's ever a strange place, quite eerie to hear in us, is, you know, because of the old original equipment that they had in, which were like old computers and stuff from the, the 80s. Uh, actually, I posted one and my, my friend who's IT said, ah, oh, steal it, steal it. <laughs> I can't steal it. He says it's worth about, yeah. he, he says it's worth about like 10 grand or something. Yeah. Because it's like a collector's thing. No, I can't steal it. And it's massive anyway. And they couldn't understand. Could you, like, we'd go down and we'd open up. I'd say, right, I'm going to go in. I'm going to walk around, make sure there's nobody in here. Yeah. I'd have to walk around in the dark by myself. They come in and they go, I don't know how you can do it. <laughs> It's not, it wasn't that bad, I think. No. The, the interesting phenomena for me was if you go into like, they had a couple of like big galley kind of kitchen, and um, what, what I would do is I'd, I'd sort of um, play kind of music from the 1940s because there was actually, it was a bit like the X Factor was um, George Formby and. Uh, yeah. They all used to travel around together and they used to turn up to places like Draco and the singer, you know, to do their bit. And this was under the tunnels and stuff, and then they move on. And so I used to play a bit of like this music from, from the era, um, maybe an air raid siren from the era. Well, we, we you had can see, you can we had measure the temperature drop from eight degrees down to four. Can't really explain that, it's just incredible. And we were there, and I'll have to put the video up, but we were there the one night. You weren't oh, there, that, were you? Yeah. We weren't there oh, the one that, night. No. And we'd, we'd been there for ages and all kinds of things. And we went what they call all the one, which is the main thing. So there's all overhead. Uh, yes, I was there for that. We were, we when the, leaving, when, yeah, we were just leaving. Yeah. And we were all there and we said, right, we're going. So we turned around as we walked away. So probably, um, here. Andrew was in, he's got his head camera on, he's not even a camera on. Boom! On that. Somebody got both their fists. And fists and gone boom on the thing above us. Because it has to have like air conditioning. Or yeah. Else, no and it wasn't because there was a contraction in the in the metal. Something hit. Yeah. Scared the bejeebas out of us, didn't we? Got yeah. that. We've actually got that on video. 
But isn't like above Greyclad quite interesting as well? Yeah, well, there's a, there's an old Iron Age fort up there. Yeah. There used to be a big, massive aerial for the communications, and there has been some apparitions seen crossing the road. There's an interesting thing about like the chase is that it's almost it's, if you can imagine two snooker queues like that, where we are now, right, in the ball that's in the middle of it is is where we are, sort of thing. So right. it's literally between two ley lines. Right. And both those ley lines, one, one ley line cuts straight through, you know, Powell's Pool where the boats are. Yeah. You go to the end of Powell's Pool, that ley line goes straight through there, straight up to the Jubilee Stone. Yeah. Um, and, and then it kind of goes on through Streetly and up towards Cannock. Wow. You know, and the ley line's really interesting because I'd love to kind of like see if, if your UFO sightings, you know, locally kind of maybe correlate with. You know, these lines at all. Oh right. Um, that's oh what, yeah. So I mean, you know, if you can, if you got the data, then yeah, I'll, I'll kind of post you the uh, the uh, the map of the ley lines. So you can zoom in anywhere in England and see, you know, see where they kind of cross. Yes. Yeah, I did notice in because I've only looked at the USA data so far. I said to Marie, "There's there's lines in it." Yeah. There are some lines. I tell you something as well. Right. Black foreign triangles. Yeah. Yeah. They're usually seen between the end of September and the beginning of March. Really? They are either usually travelling east to west or west to east. Really? Mm-hmm. And you know people say, oh they're stealth aircraft, they're stealth aircraft. No. Nah. Right, if they're stealth aircraft. Why are they lit up and why are they flying over at really low altitudes over quite built up areas? It's not really what stealth aircraft are for, is no. it? And one strange thing, which is, do you yeah, know Himley in Dudley? No, Himley, no. Himley. Uh, this is going back probably 2005. Two guys are coming down. In Leeds, it's a country, there's a country estate there, it's out in the countryside, a bit like where we are now. Yeah. And they're coming down from, I forget the name of the road, quite sex on to Hindley Road, and they get to the junction of the road. And so they get to the junction of the road. As the guy said, a box fell out the sky. Okay. This box shape fell out the sky. Above the car, the driver was that spooked he got out and ran. He ran the road, and the guy left in the car, and the guy said, It was almost as if he was underwater. Right. The guy dropped me around, stopped and looked around, there was a flash, and the box turned into a triangle. Really? Yeah. And then they noticed, have you ever heard of that thing they call the Oz Factor? The Oz Factor? The Oz Factor. No. As in the Wizard of Oz. They were somewhere else. Which was quite oh. Cars, that everything had stopped. Yeah. Oh. Don't know anything. Clone Mott's right. Anything. Don't Any symbols it. or anything. Eh? Hey? Well, it was clear as day that was. Well, it sounded like thunder. Like sound. like, yeah, that's what I thought it looked like a rumble. It, it sounded, sounded so. like a trolley rumble. Yeah. That's what it was. Like a wooden trolley. It sounded like, yeah, like um, luggage. Yeah. Like somebody was that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Hold on, let me. Oh, God. Did you record it? 
I, no, I was. Fuck him. I've, oh, I think I've got it. Right, I'm doing oh, it. Oh, he thinks he's got it though. Yeah. Oh, I probably hope so. Nothing due. Like no thunder or anything called no. rain. Or oh right, you. Yeah. That was weird. That sound. That was we heard that clearly. Didn't that I? was yeah. That was proper weird. Oh yeah, we are. Are we going to the other side? The other side was it more there it was. Oh, I'm put my torch on. <laughs> Ankle deep. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> Like this. I'm alright. You want some tea? Uh, I'm alright. <laughs> uh, it's my other. Oh, that's it. Oh. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna get the tablets. I'm gonna blow it in there. I'll put them there. I'll put the tablets. <laughs> Imagine people really back up, some way. People coming out picnics here in the day time. Not me. Probably not so bad in the day, is it? I'm not sure about that. When you know about me, really? When you yeah. know about what's happening on the night time. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. so sad, isn't it? So it's Michael Mayo. Michael Missing Mayo? on the chase. Yeah. Since the 14th of December. 14th of December. Yeah. 